In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you step by step on how to create diagram that you see on the screen in Microsoft Visio. We'll be using basic flowcharts template from Microsoft Visio, and we'll create student registration process flowchart diagram. I'm going to select basic flowchart template and click on it. And as you see, uh, as I already mentioned, Visio added a lot of uh, shapes that you typically use um, with flowchart diagrams to create flowchart diagrams and it grouped them into the basic flowchart uh, diagram stencils. It also added some other relevant shapes, for example, cross-functional flowchart shapes if you would like to do swim lane diagram. And if you need more shapes, you can select um, shapes are categorized based on categories business engineering flowchart and you can go down the list to add more shapes you just select and you see now we have basic flowchart shapes cross-functional flowchart shapes uh, and then basic shapes to start creating diagram all you need to do is drag and drop the item from the left onto the screen and um, you can zoom in and you can zoom out Let's look before we start drawing actual diagram at the menu. And uh, as for any other Office application, Microsoft uses ribbon bar uh, for Visio as well. Uh, ribbon bar consists of multiple selection choices. File choice is unique, uh, but home, insert, design data, and other tabs. As you can see, I can move between them by, by clicking on the tab. If we look at the Home tab, we have uh, items grouped into based on the particular category, like cli clip Clipboard is one of the groups, and it contains all operations related to Clipboard. Font is another group, and you can kind of go from left to right and see everything that's available on the Home tab. Each tab consists of uh, different groups, uh, and uh, you can select icons based on the function that you're trying to accomplish in Visio. Some of the functions like font, they have a details uh, button. And uh, if you click on this, it brings a, a, a dialog box which contains all items that are relevant to the font. And this items couldn't fit into the font group on the ribbon toolbar. So Microsoft created a special dialog box where you can go and select everything you need related to the font. In this tutorial, I'm going to focus on the student enrollment process. And uh, on this diagram, as you can see, we already have one box on the diagram. You can zoom in and get a little bit closer, and that's what I'm going to do, or you can zoom out. So once we have the box, we can drag and drop it on the screen. And there are a couple options how we can add additional boxes. So, for example, we need a second box. Uh, first one would be student submitting registration form. Uh, second box would be a decision point, and decision points typically on the flowchart diagram represented by diamonds. And this is the diamond that we're going to drag here on the screen. Um, now let's add a text here. And what I did, I double clicked on the rectangle, and I'm just going to start typing on the keyboard. You see the cursor is flashing so I can just say student submit the registration form now I am going to create an arrow and connect it with the arrow uh, and for that I'm gonna switch to the connector and as you can see as I hover on top of the rectangle um, it changes the connection point from black and adds a green rectangle and I'm going to glue one connection point from the rectangle to the diamond. I'm going to switch back to the pointer tool, double click on the diamond and type here form complete. Put a question mark here because this is a decision point. And now I can draw a line from connector uh, from uh, diamond back to the submission form and going to indicate no and you see now I didn't double click I just had the connector selected and I started typing 
and uh, I hit enter or I need to switch back to the pointer tool and I do have no here you see how many clicks I had to do and switch between pointer tool and connector so fortunately Microsoft created much easier way for us to add additional shapes to do that uh, you need to select for example diamond and you know that the next shape would be a rectangle so what you do you hover and you see this uh, light blue hovers available in different directions where you can actually add a shape um, and I did not click anything I just hovered and you see that I have rectangle uh, I have square and circles here so I'm just gonna select rectangle and uh, I'm going to unselect everything just to show you that it not just added a rectangle but it also added an arrow and connected arrow. It connected diamond and rectangle and it connected uh, it where I started hovering and selecting the rectangle. So that makes adding shapes much much faster. To type a text you need to select and start typing. So we're going to start, uh, start typing next step in the process verify details of submission and if I click enter it will just go to the next line so I can click escape that's one of the options or with the mouse I can just click outside of the rectangle and it will uh, finish adding a text to the rectangle now as you can see I'm in the basic shapes right now but I'm creating flowchart diagram so some of the shapes are interchangeable but let's say I don't see the letter shape as one of the steps in the process is to write an acceptance letter so I scrolled here and I see that I mistakenly uh, started doing the diagram with basic shapes so Visio provides an, a very cool feature where you can replace one shape with another shape so for example we have just a rectangle shape in the basic shapes but we can replace it with the process shape so we just have to be in the basic flowchart shape select the shape and then we change shape and uh, we uh, select the process shape from the change shape diagram then we need to select diamond and we can replace diamond with the decision and here we can replace rectangle with the process shape right uh, nothing stops us from replacing diamond for example with rectangle let me demonstrate this so I selected diamond right now let me make it a little bit closer so you can see and I can just change shape and replace it with rectangle right so it would be process shape uh, but I, I'm not happy with the result this is not what I intended to do so I can undo this operation and there are multiple ways to undo everything so you can click undo here um, on the quick toolbar or you can see these are all the shapes that we've done so far you can undo many many steps and let's say by mistake I undid too many uh, steps so now I can redo that's another button and it will complete all the steps up to that point so the only thing I need to undo now is to go back to diamond as a decision point now we would need to add a couple more steps about accepting or rejecting the submission and if submission is accepted then we'll write acceptance letter if it's rejected then we notify a student uh, about the rejection so to do that we go into decision shapes remember I showed you you can drag and drop very similar process doesn't matter which uh, stencils you use in Visio or we can select the shape a rectangular shape and then add a decision point diamond type accept submission question mark if we say yes then we say write acceptance letter and let's draw an acceptance letter back to the student I didn't select the shape type but I can change the shape letter so I can just say acceptance letter and as I mentioned all I need to do is select acceptance letter and I can change the shape and this is the letter shape and this would be my acceptance letter it's a basically a document shape not necessarily a letter shape but I'm gonna use it as a document and uh, here we would want to say yes so I just need to select an arrow and say this is the yes condition and in case there is no condition I'll have an additional box here notify student on the rejection 
Now, as we've done uh, with creation of the diagram, let's see what else we can do to make it look more professional. A couple of things I'd like to do is I'd like to make it more readable. And there's no better way to make it more readable um, than, first of all, to see if uh, something is missing. For example, um, you see that this is a diamond as a condition box. Looks like I missed the yes here. So that's one of the condition. Uh, here I missed the no condition on this diamond box. But besides that, a couple other things you can do is uh, maybe to increase your fonts to make it more readable. How would you increase font? You need to select the shape. So you need to make sure that you have the pointer tool selected. Maybe make it a little bit smaller so it fits. Select everything by uh, dragging and dropping and selecting the area. Now everything is selected. And you can use the font increase uh, button here on the font size and you see how it goes and increases uh, font size. Now this is probably too much, 12 pointers, but I think 10 pointers was just the right size. Now you might like the uh, this default style, but you can also change the styles. And uh, in fact, there is a very nice design tab here and you can switch uh, from one design to the other and pick the one that you'd like. Uh, there are also, for example, you like this design. Uh, I like a lot of contrast and a lot of bright colors. Um, but then you can switch to different variants. This is one variant, this is another variant, and all of them are listed here. Same with the themes uh, for the selection. You can click uh, Modern Theme, for example, or you can uh, pick one of the professional themes. Instead of just selecting first ones, you can select the one that you like the most. Since we're in a design tab, a couple other things you can do, maybe select the background. Like right now we have a white background. Um, you can have maybe world domination background if this is applicable. Or if you don't like it, just select Control Z and we'll go back to the white background. Now let's take another look at the diagram. A couple other things that might be missing. For simplicity purposes, I didn't have a start or end point here, but typically flowchart diagram um, does have start and end point. So we're going to select everything like I uh, did uh, for font selection by dragging and dropping the selection in the pointer tool. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag and drop start box. And I can just say that this is start of the process by double clicking on it. Uh, and uh, I am going to connect it with the arrow here. Same thing you probably would want to do at the end point, uh, and there are two end points. One is to notify student on the rejection and then acceptance letter. So it might make sense for us to uh, drag and drop the end point right here and then connect both acceptance letter and notification of the student um, right there. So I didn't show you one other cool way of uh, adding shapes here, uh, which is copy and paste. So I'm going to switch back to pointer tool. Uh, select the start, you can do copy, and if you do paste, it pastes the box. So in addition, remember, as we will recap, uh, you have a way of just dragging and dropping the shape. Then you have a way of um, adding more shapes through these extensions. Um, copy and paste is uh, another way of how you can add shapes. And now we need to connect it through the connector. So I'm going to connect it from both Notify Student and the Rejection and from the Acceptance Letter. Now, as you can see, and uh, if you, uh, as you can see here, uh, Start and End have a little bit different font. And let's double check this. So Start has eight points. And Start here is actually an End. So we need to fix that and change that. Uh, so we would want to change this. And obviously, another way to change the font size is through the font selection. And uh, same thing we would want to do. So if you're planning to copy and paste, that's really one advice I have for you. Um, you probably would want to change the way a box should look like, whatever box it is or whatever shape it is, and then copy and paste it. So this way you don't have to change after the fact, after you pasted it in uh, many places like we had to do right now. As we continue, let's, let's look at the diagram. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit and see if this makes sense. Maybe we can optimize it a little bit more. So to do that, um, we can select selective part of the diagram and maybe drag it. And you see arrow because they are connected. They continue. Um, so this way it fits onto the page better. 
Um, and one of the coolest features of the Visio diagram, obviously you can save it. And what I typically like to do, I save it as PDF file. So I just click File, Save As. First of all, you probably would want to save the diagram itself. Um, and then here we'll just say Basic Flowchart Diagram. Um, but as we save it as, you have an option of saving it as PDF file. And then it saves it as PDF and now it open in the browser, but obviously you can open it up in um, PDF uh, reader. I'm going to close the Edge browser, close all tabs. And I'm going to select everything and center it on the page. So this way, when we create a PDF from it, it's a nice looking PDF and everything is on the center of the page. Now let's recap everything we did. We started Microsoft Visio. We've looked at the ribbon toolbar. We looked at the navigation. As you saw, most of the actions I had to do were in the Home tab. I had to switch to Design tab uh, to change different patterns. Uh, inside Visio, we've looked at the Zooming uh, toolbar. Another way to do Zooming, by the way, is you click a View and then uh, Zoom, and it shows you specific zooming percentage or specific zooming ma magnification levels that you uh, like to do. Um, so we've looked at navigation, we've looked at um, different uh, shape types that's available, and we've added basic shapes. We also looked at uh, how to add shapes by dragging and dropping. Uh, that's one way to add shapes. Um, then we've added uh, shapes through the uh, help extension, right? You see this light blue uh, uh, triangles that showed up. Uh, and then the third way was through copy and paste. Once we created a basic flowchart diagram, and this was student registration process, um, we selected the diagram and changed the uh, themes and variants, uh, going in the design tab and going into variants tab. And after we've completed the work, we saved the file uh, as PDF file. And another way to take advantage of this diagram is uh, by selecting it. And I'm going to use copy. And obviously, you can paste it into uh, documents like Word. So I'm just going to demonstrate it real quick. Um, and I'm going to show the Word document. We have um, the diagram and clipboard. And we'll just click Paste. And uh, the diagram, as a single object, is selected in Microsoft Word. If you like the content, please make sure to click the like button and share with your friends. Also, there's tons of information in the description of this video. Make sure to check it out. Make sure to check out my other relevant videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have a lot of great stuff planned in the pipeline, and I don't want you to miss any of it. And if you'd like to get notified about all the new stuff that are coming out, make sure to subscribe to my email list as well. All links are here on the screen. Make sure to click to stay in touch. Thanks again for watching.